Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters in Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha, the Omega, the Beginning, and the Ending, who was, and is, and is to come, the Lord, God, Almighty, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. That's according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, Micah 5, verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, and Colossians chapter 1. They all speak of Jesus as God Almighty, as God in the flesh. Amen. Now, I want to do a video today concerning the peace in the Middle East. Okay, now, many Bible <coughs> believers and, and Bible students understand that there has to be a peace deal uh, in the latter days between the Antichrist and Israel and many nations. Okay, that's found in Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. And that essentially sets the time clock for the tribulation period, according to my understanding. Now, if you have been following along the past few years, you know that peace talks really ramped up uh, in the Middle East when Donald Trump proposed his peace deal of the century, okay? And then along with that came the Abraham Accords to unite the Arab nations with Israel and the United States and so on and so forth. Now, I think the Daniel 9.27 covenant will come on the shoulders of the Abraham Accords and actually have a whole article dedicated uh, to, this, uh, to this subject. If we take a look here at my website, trumpetforyahweh.blogspot.com I'll try to leave a link in the comment section below or the information section below. And I basically detail information concerning uh, this Abraham Accords, the peace deal, the two-state solution, and what Bible prophecy says about it all. And I think it's a good resource if you're not familiar uh, with this uh, type of thing. Okay, and it's about Daniel's 70th week the final seven year period okay and uh, let's see we do know that uh, according to Genesis chapter 15 verses 18 to 21 the promise was first made to Abraham for the Holy Land for Israel then confirmed to his son Isaac in Genesis 26 3 and then to Isaac's son Jacob in Genesis 28 verses 12 to 13, uh, who is Abraham's grandson. Now, now we of course know Jacob is Israel. Okay, the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay, the twelve sons of Jacob. And the Promised Land was described in terms of the territory from the river Egypt to the river, Great River Euphrates, in in Exodus, Exodus chapter 23 to 31. Okay, now this is a a covenant that God made with his people. Okay, therefore, according to the Most High, this land belongs to the nation of Israel, the seed of Jacob, and not the Palestinians. Okay? Now, we of course know that Christ is the rightful heir to Jerusalem, and he will establish his kingdom in Zion, in Jerusalem, when he returns, this is in Zechariah 14, uh, Psalms chapter 2, Psalms 110, Revelations 19 and 20, talk about his return, and the millennial kingdom. Okay, we also know in Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7, it tells us a prophecy for the Messiah. And it says that of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice henceforth even forever okay that is indicating that Christ will rule Jerusalem the city of David the city of the king of, of our great God and Savior amen now let's take a 
look at uh, this article here that's published at the Washington Post uh, July 11th 2022 it says Biden can unite Israel and Saudi Arabia to meet Iran threats okay now many of us know that the Luciferians have been planning World War III and I believe the Daniel 927 peace deal won't come about until after World War III and then there will be a false peace between Israel and many nations okay so I think this is all just setting the groundwork okay for the Antichrist to appear as a false savior now it says here President Joe Biden's success in reunifying and revitalizing the alliance of Western democracies even expanding the North Atlantic Treaty Organization to include Finland and Sweden has given Washington its most dynamic international leadership role in decades. Now he's going to try to do the same in the Middle East when he visits the region this week. Now why is it the whole world is focused on Israel? Why are so many nations, the United Nations, the Vatican, the Pope, uh, all these nations, the EU, they all want a two-state solution. Why is that? Well, because they want to divide God's Holy Land. They want to take away the inheritance of Jacob because the devil knows Christ will return to Israel, to Jerusalem, and that's where his kingdom will be. Okay? Now it says here, There the common adversary is Iran and not Russia. There's nothing as galvanizing as the invasion of Ukraine to bring together fractious neighbors, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and other Arab countries. But Iran's nuclear progress, growing missile arsenal, and network of extremist militia groups across the region is, or should be, the next alarming concern in geopolitics. Okay, but it goes on to say, let's see. His biggest challenge is that the two most important actors, Israel and Saudi Arabia, don't have diplomatic relations. Okay, that's part of what the Abraham Accords is about. And also to try to unite Palestine in some way. And uh, it says here, unlike its smaller neighbors, the UAE and Bahrain, which normalized relations with Israel in the Abraham Accords, Saudi Arabia needs meaningful concessions on the Palestinians to take any major diplomatic steps. So they're saying that in order to achieve peace between Israel and Saudi Arabia, you first need to make peace between Palestine and Israel, thus most likely uh, pointing towards a two-state solution, okay? Dividing God's Holy Land. It says here, Israel, Biden's first stop, is again in political tumult. With the coalition government having collapsed last month, yet this may provide an opportunity. A productive meeting with Biden could give the interim Prime Minister, Yair Lapid, greater stature heading into the elections this fall, and so on and so forth. It says Lapid is far more open to restarting talks with the Palestinians than other Israeli leaders, okay, pointing to the two-state solution says here at the meeting biden should stress a halt on the building or expansion of settlements especially beyond the west bank protecting the status quo at religious sites in jerusalem and halting provocations like evictions and nightly raids into palestinian ruled areas biden needs to press israel to recommit itself to a two-state solution okay here we see the washington post is saying that we need to divide God's holy land and give the uh, inheritance of Jacob to their enemies, the Philistines, the Palestinians. Okay, it says, which remains a key Saudi goal by expressing support for the eventual creation of a Palestinian state and promising not to annex occupied areas. Okay, so that's what this is all about. Okay, they want to make a false peace deal in the Middle East, dividing God's Holy Land, giving Eastern Jerusalem 
the 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 name that has the 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 city that has the name of God on it, giving half of it to Palestine. Okay, this is not going to end well, not at all for those who are trying to divide the land. Okay, now let's uh, look again at my article here. Okay, this here is Genesis fifteen eighteen. It says, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying unto thy seed, Have I given this land from the river Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Okay? That's, uh, you know, this whole portion is supposed to be given to Israel, yet Israel is now only confined to a tiny little bit of land <laughs> right there next to Jerusalem. Okay? And they, they want all of it. They're not going to stop till the devil has all of God's promised land. Okay. Now we know, of course, that when they say peace and security, that's when sudden destruction comes. Okay. First Thessalonians 5 verse 3. Okay. So let's, uh, let's take a look here at the uh, President Donald Trump's peace deal of the century this map here okay now all of this blue region here is supposed to be the land of Palestine okay so they're giving all this land to Palestine including Jericho Hebron Bethlehem where our Lord was born Ramallah uh, Nablus so many you know very important uh, parts of, of Israel are being given to God's uh, enemies. Okay, God is not going to stand for it. Let's take a look at some photos here. Okay, now Daniel's 70th week is known as Jacob's trouble. Okay, the, the final seven year tribulation period. And uh, out of that trouble, a remnant of Israel will be saved. Okay. And we know that <clears throat> God has brought Israel back into the land for the final seven year period. Daniel's 70th week in Ezekiel 37 verse 21. It says, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. Okay, 1948. Now, we of course know Daniel's 70th week uh, is about to begin, okay? And the 69 weeks of Daniel were completed when the Messiah was crucified, okay? Let's see, it says here that Artaxerxes, I think the Persian emperor, announced a degree to rebuild Jerusalem. And if you calculate that until the Messiah was cut off in 32 AD, it was, you know, 69 weeks. It was 483 years. Okay, and that's according to Daniel chapter 9. So there's one more week, one more seven year period that remains. And that is Daniel's 70th week. It says here in Daniel 9.27, And he, the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, seven years. And in the midst of the week he shall cause a sacrifice and the oblation to cease in Israel and the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate okay now we understand that the seven year tribulation period I believe uh, I believe begins with the Daniel 927 peace covenant between the Antichrist and Israel and many nations and then you have three and a half years of false peace in Israel until the Antichrist betrays the covenant goes into the Holy Temple and calls himself God 
in the temple of God, 2 Thessalonians 2, and then Israel has to flee into the mountains, the remnant of Israel, uh, for three and a half years until Christ returns, delivers the remnant of Israel, and reclaims Jerusalem and establishes his millennial kingdom for a thousand years on the earth. And he destroys the Antichrist, the false prophet, and all of the armies gathered together at the Battle of Armageddon. Okay? All the kings of the earth. And it says here, in Joel 3.16, you know, it talks about uh, you know, the nations dividing his land, and it says in Joel 3.16, The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall quake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Okay. And in Revelation 16, 16, it says that he gathered them together in a place which is called, in Hebrew, Megiddo. Okay, the Valley of Megiddo. Right there, next to it, next to Jerusalem. Okay, the Battle of Armageddon appears will take place in the Valley of Megiddo, or Jezreel, in Israel. And this is a great and terrible battle that will happen at the end of Daniel's 70th week. The end of the seven year tribulation period. Okay, so now let's take a look at a, a portion of IPEG Go 2, which I think deals with the uh, division of God's holy land. Okay, now, but first let's take a look, uh, just for reference, it says in Zechariah 2, verses 8 through 9, For this saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that touches you, touches the apple of his eye, speaking of Israel or Jerusalem. For behold, I will shake mine hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Okay, so this is saying that Israel or Jerusalem is the apple of God's eye, okay? It's it's his, uh, you know, it's, it's the thing that he has placed his name on, okay? Out of all the nations, uh, the Lord has chosen uh, uh, Israel and Jerusalem for himself. But we, of course, know through the New Covenant, uh, the, the good news of, of Christ, the Messiah, uh, was sent to every nation, okay? But when Christ returns, all of his, all the Christians, all the born-again saints, will rule and reign with Christ in Jerusalem, okay, in Zion. Okay, now, <clears throat> keep in mind also that there is the Magog Islands of Iran, Russia, and Turkey in Ezekiel 38, which is also forming in opposition to the nation of Israel. Let's take a look at IPEG Go 2. Now, of course, this is a satanic film that I believe hides the plans of the Luciferians uh, in which they will conspire in order to bring about the Antichrist as a false savior and to establish a global government out of the ashes of World War III, out of the ashes of the division of Israel, and uh, and so on and so forth, and the destruction of America as well. Okay, let's take a look at a clip here. Now, this is, I think this has a lot of different meanings here, this scene. Okay, you have this girl with the apple, of course, that's alluding to Eve in the garden who ate the forbidden fruit, who brought sin into the world, okay? But it's also alluding to Israel, which is, or uh, Jerusalem, which is the apple of God's eye, okay? And you could say that these 12 figures here could be 
okay, the 12 tribes of Israel. Or it could also represent the 12 calendar months or the 12 moons of uh, the, the yearly calendar cycle, okay? Now, there's a lot, I think, hidden in this, okay? But I want to focus here about the division of the apple, the division of Jerusalem, okay? And the establishment of the 927 uh, peace deal. Okay, let's watch this. Now, I also have a section of this, of, of this uh, sort of decode within my article on the Abraham Accords. Uh, so if you scroll through, uh, you could find that information as well at my website, trumpetforyahweh.blogspot.com. It's going a little bit too slow, but here you see she drops the apple. Okay, now this apple, I believe, is a representation of uh, Jerusalem or Israel, okay? And Jerusalem or Israel is under the spotlight on the world stage on the Freemason uh, checkerboard, okay? Uh, and essentially, this is about you know the the nations being focused on israel on jerusalem and on the two-state solution i believe let us continue notice that uh, israel has fumbled the apple israel has fumbled jerusalem and jerusalem falls and is divided okay and it hits a certain foot Now this here is the foot of Obama. So is this saying that Israel is going to land at the feet of the Antichrist Obama where he will divide and make peace in Israel? That's what I believe this indicates. Now you see when it touches Obama's foot, uh, the apple splits in half. Notice also there's a C and there's either an L or a 7. Okay. Now you might say that this stands for LC, Lucifer, I don't know. Or it could stand for 7C as well. Uh, but I'll get to more of that in a minute here in terms of that decode. Now notice that the, the apple is already spoiled, okay? That's because sin has entered into Israel, sin has entered into Jerusalem, and the worm, okay, the devil, has gotten into the apple and has spoiled it from the inside out. And after the apple, after Jerusalem is divided, there will be a, a lotus flower. Now this uh, lotus flower could be a symbol of peace, okay? Now this could represent the Tan Daniel 927 peace deal. And uh, this little portion here, it kind of looks like a, a temple, like a temple dome. It reminds me of the, the temple in Jerusalem, the Alaska Mosque, okay? So is this talking about making a peace deal? Uh, you know, concerning the third temple that has to be built for Daniel's 70th week? Possibly, okay? Now, I want to note that in Donald Trump's peace deal of the century, it stipulated that there would be a third temple in Jerusalem and the Temple Mount would be shared between the Palestinians, the Muslims, and the Jews, okay? A false peace. Now, there's some kind of coin under Obama's foot, and I don't really understand what the coin represents. Maybe it has to do with selling out Jerusalem for money. I'm not sure. Here 
Here you see Obama is sweating. And here you see Obama with his graduation cap, I think, signifying that he graduated into his Antichrist position. You also have the Poseidon uh, symbol here, or the circle with the uh, line through it, you know, the serpent's eye, which is also Obama's signature. You also have the uh, sort of lightning symbol. Okay, Luke 10, 18 says that, you know, that Jesus saw satan fall like lightning from the heavens okay so lightning is symbol of satan but also uh in in hebrew or aramaic lightning from the heavens literally the words are uh barack obama okay so that's another clue i think And here you see that America is now divided. It's now, it looks like destroyed was through some sort of nuclear holocaust, some sort of nuclear winter, okay? You have what ap appears to be tsunami waves. You have the, the flag torn in half, probably a symbol of America being divided. And you have this like nuclear winter. It's like a post-apocalyptic scene. Okay. So let's take a picture. Uh, let's take a look at some more pictures. Now, I kind of studied this for a while concerning the apple landing on the, the circle, the C and the seven. Okay. Now, this is just my speculation. The the circle or the half circle that's in ipad go 2 near the apple and the seven i believe could represent you know israel uh falling within the seventh new moon okay now the seventh new moon is uh the uh it's known as the feast of trumpets okay now i thought personally i thought that Israel was going to be divided in, uh, you know, uh, on Feast of Trumpets in 2020. Uh, but that wasn't the case. So it still could be divided on Feast of Trumpets uh, this year, possibly. Okay. So here we have the apple in the, in the half circle, the new moon, on the seventh month, possibly. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look at some other pictures. Now this here is the Jewish months, okay? The first one is Nisan, which is between March and April. And then if, then you have Ayar, Savan, Tammuz, Av, Elul, Tishri, uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, Tishri, I believe, is where, is the seventh month where the Feast of uh, Yom Teruah or the Feast of Trumpets is okay. It's in the seventh month uh, of the of the biblical year. Okay, so it's could be hinting at that time. Now some people speculate that it could be the seventh month of uh, of the uh, the Gregorian calendar or you know the calendar that we use here in America, uh, which would be of course July. So some people think that it means that uh that it could be you know that israel could be divided uh you know in july okay and and that's a possibility i don't really know for sure okay this is all just speculation now if you study the sea that the apple landed on you might say that it has to do with either the beginning of the month or the end of the month okay because every new month begins with a new moon a new crescent circle which is like a C okay so it could be talking about the end of the seventh month or the beginning of the seventh month okay 
but here we see the C and we see the seven. Okay. And of course, seventh, the seventh month uh, being, the, being Tishri, okay, being the Feast of Trumpets, all right. Uh, so, you know, this is all just uh, my speculation, but I think it's something we should watch for considering they're, you know, talking about peace in the Middle East once again. Anyhow, I hope to see you all in heaven very soon at the rapture. Uh, Jesus said, watch and pray always that you're counted worthy to escape and to stand before the Son of Man, Luke 21, 36. And if you don't know Jesus, Yeshua, as your Lord and Savior, please confess and forsake your sins. Believe that he is God, that he paid for our sins on the cross, and uh, get baptized, follow his commandments according to the Bible, the New Testament, and uh, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen and follow in his commands until the very end and i hope to see you all in heaven very soon and shalom until next time amen